Today, how to fix AudioLab 8000 series broken RCA sockets. This is an AudioLab 8000A that I've had since the mid 90s when I bought it new. Like all of the AudioLab 8000 series of the time, it suffers from breakage of the rear sockets on the uh, rear panel. I'll come on to some of the whys and wherefores as we go through. Fortunately, this audio lab amplifier repair is really easy. A quick word though about the spare parts you'll require. You'll require a set of the correct phono sockets, which come in little uh, clusters of four. For a long, long time now, these have not been available from Audio Lab themselves, and finding alternatives has been very, very difficult. Fortunately, I've been able to source these alternatives, which have got gold plated phono sockets. Have a look in the description if you uh, want to buy some. I've got some on resale. To open up your Audio Lab 8000A, or your 8000P, or even your 8000Q, or 8000S. I think that's the right letters of the series. I'm relying on my memory there, so don't take that as gospel. Remove two T20 screws from each side of the top panel, and the top panel then simply lifts straight off. Turn your amp upside down. Remove seven screws with a T10 torqued bit. Slide the bottom panel backwards, just a couple of mil or so, to release it from the front edge there and lift away. If I show you the back panel of my amplifier from the inside, you can see that I've already replaced the uh, tuner CD input sockets uh, because of course I was uh, experimenting and uh, making sure of course that I've got the right parts before I recommend them to yourselves. First of all, we need to get the uh, old one out, keeping the out the right way up with a Torx T10 screwdriver Remove the small screw from the center of the four phonos that we're going to repair. You could, of course, do them all at once, but I'm just doing the one here to show you how it's done. Now, whether you choose to have the back panel towards you or away from you is up to you. At this stage, I prefer to have them away from me because I can get at the solder tags underneath this uh, lip of the case here. You will now need some solder removal wick. Although I know some people when they're doing this prefer to use a solder removal pump. With a nice hot soldering iron, apply your wick to each solder joint in turn. Now as you move along, there are a few positions where there are other components soldered in. So always make sure by looking on both sides of the board if necessary, that you're uh, removing the correct solder joint. With a pick or a small screwdriver, just make sure that the legs you've removed the solder from are now free to move. And if they're not, simply repeat the process. If you've successfully wicked away all the solder for the joint, then it ought to come free very easily. With the amp the right way up again, you should now be able to use a fine nose pair of pliers and remove the original connector. The legs should pretty much lift straight out. Don't forget to retrieve all the tiny little bits of uh, plastic Obviously, it doesn't matter if you do any uh, more damage to the connector in order to release it. What I do, just to make sure that I've cleared the hole so that the new legs can go in okay, is I wipe me uh, soldering iron on one, on one of the old legs like this to uh, clear it, and just use this to poke through each hole, either with a licked finger, or uh, a cloth, or maybe even a, a mini vacuum. Make sure that you've retrieved all of the plastic bits. One word of caution, some of the plastic bits are very sharp. When I'm using a Q-tip and some meths, you could use some ordinary alcohol contact cleaner. And I'm just cleaning up around where the contacts go. As an alternative, should you find that you can't get hold of any, uh, any of these blocks of four phono sockets, you could use individual chassis mount phono sockets. It will make the job a whole load fiddlier, because, of course, you'll have to solder pieces of wire to each uh, connection and then put them in and solder them down to the board. But it is something that is possible. I have seen photographs of a job like that being done. By the magic that is video, I've removed all four of these across here and I've replaced these three. To get the new ones in, place the new block into position and push the phono plugs through the holes in the chassis and then push the whole assembly towards the rear in an effort to get the pins through the holes. I'm using a small pick just to push the pins far enough back that they'll go through the holes. Then I have to use a magnifying glass 
to see the pins going into the holes because my 60 year old eyes are not as good at close up work as they uh, once were. You might find pushing down on the board a little helps actually, just to uh, put a little bit of flex into the board. Once it's in place, you should be able to lean the connector back a little bit, move it up and down just so that you can see the legs are in the holes. I did say I'd explain a little bit about why this problem occurs. The bottom line is that it's heat. These amplifiers run too hot. Let's not beat about the bush. It's a design and engineering issue, which Cambridge never did anything about. I don't know whether they made a mistake in the engineering or whether they deliberately just sort of thought, mm, it'll be okay, you know, but uh, that's the root cause of the problem. The board gets burned in some areas around here because there are some quarter watt resistors that are dissipating nearly uh, four tenths of a watt. The heat sink for the main power amplifier section, if you look at the lid and the bottom, the, the cutout is exactly the same shape as the heat sink. So it, it's it basically, it's like a chimney effect. Plenty of air comes through the heat sink to cool these power amplifier transistors, but doesn't flow around here because there's no holes in the lid. One of the things I'm going to do when I put, once I've checked my work and make sure it all works again is uh, put some extra holes in the lid in this region here and also in this region here to help dissipate some of that excess heat. I'll also do another video replacing these quarter watt resistors that are starting to burn but I'm going to put the amplifier back together at the end of this uh, to check my work here and make sure it's still okay which, which is something that I would advise if you're working on this amplifier if you're going to recap it all the way through or, or, or whatever work on it a section at a time and then test it and make sure that it still works. If you do a ton of work recapping say and changing resistors and then find something's wrong and it doesn't work you're going to have to go through all of your work to find out where you went wrong. If you do it a little bit at a time and then test each time hopefully you won't go wrong but if you do you'll know that it was just that last little bit of work that you did that is the problem and not have to search the whole board. So having put the screws back in the uh, phono blocks across the back panel here to hold the phono blocks into place. Turn your amplifier upside down again so that you can get at all those pins. I'm going to brush a little bit of flux on each connection. Remember when you're resoldering joints, flux is your friend. You almost can't have enough flux. Well you can, but you know what I mean. The little extra is a help rather than a hindrance. And we'll make, the, make sure that the solder flows well. Particularly on these new pins, which have not been soldered before of course. One last little inspection to make sure that all the legs are poking through the holes. Because it'd be so much harder to rectify if you make a mistake than it is to uh, check beforehand. And then with a nice warm iron, go along and solder each joint together. Put your iron on the joint up against the leg, say about half a second before you bring your solder in. Allow the solder to melt into the joint and then lift your iron away vertically. Before you put the lid and the bottom panel back on, just go around the board with your T10 Torx and check that all these screws are done up. I've, I found a few of them were loose, so I've just nipped them all up. And don't forget the two on the side for the uh, phono heatsink. And you'll need to pass your Torx bit through this hole in the panel to do this one. And don't be tempted to tighten up these screws along the bottom of the uh, front panel here until after you've slotted the bottom piece back in. If you got value for this video, please consider supporting the channel in some way. Maybe buy your replacement uh, phono sockets for your audio lab from me. And I shall see you next time.